Hi there, everyone. My name is Baron Angel, and I'm the librarian here at the Florida Public Library. And we're back to tell you more about some great items in our library of things, namely our board game collection. We've had these for a while, but I think there's a lot of great games in this collection that people might not be familiar with. So I'm going to be doing a series of videos showing you how some of these games are played. Today's game is called Munchkin Deluxe. Now, Munchkin is a really great game from Steve Jackson Games, and it's effectively Dungeons and Dragons, but without the dice rolling and the heavy role-playing aspects. It's basically, what if you could just say, roll, weapons, fight some monsters. So, we're going to take a look at how this is played. All it really needs is the cards and the board that are included with it. There are a lot of variations of Munchkin out there if you decide it's a game you like and you want to try some varieties we don't have here. Everything from Lord of the Rings Munchkin to Harry Potter Munchkin to Disney Munchkin. Almost anything you can think of, there's probably a Munchkin variation for it. Now the Deluxe, in today's Deluxe version, is because this version of Munchkin comes with a game board and standees for your players. You don't actually need these to play Munchkin. All you really need are the two decks of cards that come with it. But it's nice to have this because it does make the game a little more visual and it makes it a little easier to keep track of which players are at what level. So let's go down to the game board here and I'll show you how this game works. All right, now we're down here at the game board. So the first thing to know about Munchkin is that you need at least three people to play it and you can have up to six, and that the game is aimed for ages 13 and up, mostly because there's some not bad jokes on the cards, but some jokes that are better for teens and older that little kids probably wouldn't understand. So stick with 13 and up. You're, you're going to be okay with that. Now, the goal of the game, as you might guess from looking at the board, is to start at level one and to get yourself all the way to level 10. The first player to reach level 10 will win the game. And how do you reach level 10? Well, by collecting treasures and fighting monsters, of course. So let's take a look at the cards because the cards are gonna be the key. So let's say that I was going to go first and let's say that I'm playing as this red guy here as a sample. So I'm gonna start here at level one. All players are at level one to start. And it's worth knowing all players at the start are human and don't have a class to begin with, and you'll see what those are in just a second. So let's take a look at the cards. Each player starts off with eight cards in their hand. Four from what we call the door deck, which looks like this, and four from what we call the treasure deck, which looks kind of like this. You can see that they're both on the board there. So these decks do different things. So let's take a look at some of the cards real quick. So of the four door cards we'll start off with, the first one I see here is I have a called card, a card called Dwarf. <laughs> and that card says Race. That means that I can play this card to become a Dwarf. The other kind of card that might affect who you are is what's called a Class card. I have here a class card for a thief. So I can choose right now to be a dwarven thief. And each of these two things gives me special abilities that will help me to try to win the game, either by letting me defeat monsters more easily or by giving me abilities that I can use to stop the other players from beating monsters so they don't gain levels. So once I've chosen to use these, they'll go on the table where all the other players can see them. That way they know what I have for those. However, any other cards that are in my hand, such as these, you can see I have a curse here, which can be used to hurt other players and uh, stop them from trying to gain levels, and a monster here, which is a card I might have to fight sometime in the game. I can keep those in my hand, and nobody else has to see those unless I choose to use them. The other kind of card in the game are treasure cards, and those will give you useful items that can make it easier for you to fight monsters. For example, this is a dagger of treachery, and as you can see, this can only be used by a thief, which luckily, I am a thief, so I can use this, and it gives me a plus three bonus when I'm fighting monsters. 
I also have these plus two boots of butt kicking, which will give me another plus two when I'm fighting against monsters. So I now have plus five, which is really good. You might not always get really good cards like this to start with, but you might get some stuff you can use and pick up more cards as you go through the game. When it's your turn, if you have items you don't want, you can get rid of those and get more items in order to help yourself raise your level and fight monsters. Monsters can be really weak at only two or three levels, or monsters can be really strong at up to 20 levels. So the stronger you are, the more likely it is you'll be able to beat monsters. And just like with the door cards, any extra treasure cards can go in my hand and I can use them later. For example, here's a wishing ring that I could use to cancel out a curse if someone tries to use one on me. And the magic lamp is a card that I can use to get away from a monster if I don't want to fight it. We'll hold those in the hand for later. Now, what I would do for my turn here is I would go to the door deck up here on the board and draw a door card. This step is called kicking down the door. At the start of my turn, I would do this. Now, I have drawn a monster. It's called Flying Frogs, level 2. So, because this monster is level 2, I need to be stronger than the 2 in order to defeat it. So my strength is my level, which is level 1, plus whatever items I have. In this case, I have 3 for the dagger and 2 for the boots. So my level is 6 right now. So I'm strong enough that I can just defeat this monster. And when I defeat the monster, I get to go up one level for defeating that monster. So I go up to level two. Now, it's worth noting when you're fighting monsters that sometimes they have abilities. Like this flying frog has a plus one to run away. If you draw a monster and it's too strong for you to fight, you can try to run away. And the way you do that is by rolling the dice. If you roll a five or a six, then you get away. If you don't get away, then the monster will do bad stuff to you. Every monster has bad stuff on the bottom. In this case, a player loses two levels because they get bit by the flying frogs. But in this case, I beat the monster, so the bad stuff does not happen. Now, what can sometimes happen is if you were to get a strong monster and I was not strong enough to beat it, instead of running away, I could ask another player to help me. And we could put our strength together and add up our numbers to be more than the monster so we can beat it. But since the other players are trying to win the game, they're not going to help me for free. Chances are, they're in exchange for beating the monster, they're going to ask me to give them a treasure card, or maybe to give them an item that I have equipped, or maybe to give them a card in my hand that's helpful, such as that card I mentioned earlier that lets me block a curse. That might be something somebody might want, or I could offer to them in exchange for their help defeating the monster. So your goal is to try to defeat the monsters to gain levels while at the same time making sure you don't give your opponents too much of an advantage in the instances where you might need their help. Now, the, there is one other way that you can gain levels. For example, I have these cards in my hand, and you can see that at the bottom here, they have a value in gold pieces. Almost all the treasure cards do. If you have 1,000 gold pieces in cards, which right now these are 500 each, what you can do alternatively during your turn is put these two treasures in the discard pile and gain one level for that 1,000 treasure. So that's another way you can gain levels if you're not good at fighting the monsters. But you're also giving up these cards so you won't have their abilities later. And the same thing goes with item cards like these. They have a treasure value too, so you could trade those in also. It's also worth remembering that if your cards have more than 1,000, uh, and let's say, for example, one of these was 600 and I had 1,100, I could turn that in to gain the level, but I'm also losing that 100 gold pieces. There's no change back when you put in for your gold pieces to gain levels, so keep that in mind. So once I've finished my turn, then it would go to the next player and they would get a chance to draw, kick down the door, draw a monster, and try to fight it. Now, if you go to draw a monster and the next card in the door deck is not a monster, then you get to keep that card in your hand to potentially use later. If you do that, then you have a choice of what you can do on your turn. You could either choose to loot the room 
in which case you could draw an extra door card and put it in your hand to keep it secret for later. Uh, any cards that you pick up when you kick the door down, you have to show to everybody. Or you can choose to try to get yourself a treasure card instead. So uh, each turn, you'll have an opportunity to do something. Uh, the other thing you can do if you don't draw a monster is if you have a monster in your hand like we did earlier, you could choose to play that monster and try to fight it to gain a level instead. So if you end up with a low-level monster in your hand, you could hold on to that so that if you get a turn later in the game where there's no monster, you could play a really easy one and beat it and gain a level without doing a lot of work, which is cool. The last note to remember, though, is that when you get up to level 10, in order to get level 10, you have to beat a monster. You can't reach level 10 by turning in treasures like I mentioned earlier. It has to be beating a monster to get to level 10. And the first player to reach that level 10 is the winner. There are also cards or potentially bad stuff from monsters that will cost you levels and make you go back. So if somebody gets in the lead, the other player shouldn't worry because you might be able to still come back and win the game. And that is Munchkin Deluxe. The next player would then go, they'd kick the door down, you know, try to fight the monster, so on and so forth. The rest of the rules are in the rulebook, which are included with the game, and it's not a particularly hard game. Once you've played it a round or two, you'll start to really understand it, and it really is a lot of fun, especially if you get a bunch of friends playing it. It's really, really enjoyable. And the fun thing is, if you happen to be playing Munchkin and you have some of those other ones I mentioned, like the Disney one or the Harry Potter one, you can mix and match them together and play with whatever ones you want to make crazy stuff happen. So that's always worth keeping in mind. So, that is the game Munchkin Deluxe. It's available in our library of things. You can check it out for one week and then bring it back when you're done. And I encourage you to check it out and give it a try because it really is a very fun game. And I think it's something that, you know, if the family doesn't have any really little kids, that the whole family could play together and really enjoy. And if a lot of people play it and you guys decide you like it, maybe we'll buy some of those other ones too. But you got to let us know that you tried it out and that you like it, okay? So, until then, be sure to check out Munchkin Deluxe and all the other board games and great items we have in our library of things, which you can check out by going to floridapubliclibrary.org and clicking on the Library of Things button right in the toolbar at the top. I'm Baron, and we'll see you next time for the next game demo.